Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of The Roof is on Fire. The Roof! The Roof is on Fire! A 35-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension and diabetes was found unresponsive at approximately 1 in the morning by EMS outside a residential home that was actively in flames. The patient was dragged outside by his father when EMS was called. Now, why am I covering this? We are a level 1 regional burn center. We see this all the time. What can be so interesting about this case that I'm bringing it to you today? Well, let's see. His vitals are 36.2, his heart rate's 127, blood pressure of 138 over 84, breathing 24 times a minute, setting 100% on non-rebreather, and he's GCS 15. On physical exam, he's got 7% total body surface area, superficial partial thickness burns to his left cheek, posterior neck, bilateral upper extremities, nothing circumferential, but there's soot and blisters to his posterior oropharynx, and he's got carbonaceous sputum. The decision was made to intubate him for airway protection because of the concern for progressing airway edema and airway compromise. Here's his ABG. Look at that carboxyhemoglobin, 23.4. This is when carbon monoxide binds to deoxyhemoglobin. This happens to people when they're in an enclosed space when something is on fire. And the treatment is 100% O2 or HBO. Just a little Game of Thrones or Flight of the Concords. And winter is coming. No, hyperbaric oxygen. Carbon monoxide also binds to myoglobin, causing an atraumatic rhabdomyolysis. And there's something else about this ABG. I'm sure you noticed it's the first number at the top of the reading. pH of 7.1. This guy's awake and talking to you. Why is his pH 7.1? He has a lactate of 11.2? What on earth is happening? This is cyanide poisoning. Cyanide poisoning has the same features as severe carbon monoxide poisoning. Things like altered mental status, seizures, or coma. And it's common to have concurrent carbon monoxide and cyanide poisoning, especially in an enclosed fire situation. Things like lactate greater than 10 millimoles per liter like we had in this case can be suggestive of cyanide poisoning. The treatment is so sodium thiosulfate or hydroxycobalamin. The th sodium thiosulfate facilitates renal excretion of cyanide. The dose is 12.5 grams IV and this is the standard 50 ml of a 25% solution. Now if it's a pediatric patient you only want to give 2 mLs per kg of that same solution. What about hydroxycobalamin? Cobalt plus cyanide forms cyanocobalamin. This is vitamin B12. The dose is five grams IV over 15 minutes or 70 mg per kg IV if it's a pediatric patient. And this can be given with sodium thiosulfate. So if you have one, you can give whichever one you have. If you have both, you can give both. What are our take home points? We think about carboxyhemoglobin, we think about carbon monoxide poisoning, but I want you to think about cyanide poisoning. So if you're treating carbon monoxide poisoning from an enclosed fire, you probably should be treating cyanide poisoning. If there's a lactate greater than 10, it can be suggestive of cyanide poisoning, but again, if you're treating one, really want to think about treating the other. Give 100% oxygen for the carbon monoxide component, and then either sodium thiosulfate or hydroxycobalamin, or both, for the cyanide poisoning. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine. Keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.